So have you ever seen a diver at the end of a dive, perhaps float away, pass their safety stop, pop to the surface and wonder what happened there? Well, this video is a discussion about scuba diver weights and proper weighting, as well as a little indication of what I use in terms of weights and balance and so forth. Now, please note, this video is not intended for training purposes. You should take a recognized scuba training course with a certified dive instructor before scuba diving or free diving. Now, your dive instructor will run through your proper weighting with you in the pool. So firstly, a scuba diver wants to be in full control of their buoyancy at all times. I've heard so many divers complain that they were so negatively buoyant that they were dropping like rocks to the bottom of the ocean, not being able to stay afloat or control their position in the water. Now, even when they're at the surface with the BC fully inflated, they said they were going down under the water. That's totally wrong. Similarly, I've also heard of divers who could barely get down and sometimes found themselves floating away at different points of the dive, depending on their buoyancy. Now, you can go down as quickly as you can equalize. But as you know, you don't want to go up faster than what's considered the safe rate of ascent. And I know that all of you know your dive tables and you know about the nitrogen absorption and why you don't want to go up quicker than the safe rate of ascent. So our fastest prescribed safe rate of ascent would ideally be one foot per second or 60 feet per minute. And some of the new dive computers suggest or indicate that we should slow down our rate of ascent as we hit 33 feet on the way up, we'll slow down our ascent to one foot in three seconds. And then we stop at 15 feet for our three minute safety stop, of course. So, in theory anyway, if you weight yourself for neutral buoyancy at the start of your dive and you're using an aluminum alloy tank, chances are you will be going up quickly and unable to stop at your safety stop on your way to the surface at the end of your dive. Why would this be so, of course? Well, as scuba divers, we do tend to use either steel or aluminum tanks to carry the gas, air or nitrox, that we would need for breathing while underwater. Now, steel tanks are always negatively buoyant, whether they're full or empty. A steel Faber 80 cubic foot tank, for example, is 13 pounds negatively buoyant in the ocean at the start of a dive, and that's 3,000 PSI. At the end of the dive with about 500 PSI, that tank is about 8.5 pounds negative, so it's still negative. Now, an aluminum alloy tank, Luxfer 80 cubic foot, for example, will have three relevant states and different states of buoyancy. When it's full, it is approximately 1.5 pounds negative. At half tank, 1500 PSI, the tank would be giving you about 1.5 pounds of positive buoyant or lift. And when it's empty, you're down to 500 PSI, chances are that tank is giving you around four pounds of positive buoyancy. In other words, it's pulling you up. So if you started neutral at the end of the dive, you're floating away by an extra four pounds. So if we use an extra two or three pounds at the start of our dive and the BCD to compensate for that extra weight at the start, then when we're down to approximately maybe 600 PSI, we come to 15 to 20 feet, we hang there, we're at neutral buoyancy. That would be perfect because we're not floating away, we're able to control our position in the water. We're neither floating nor sinking, we're neutrally buoyant. That's what we're striving for. So, as an example for me personally, I tend to use six pounds with an aluminum alloy tank to be neutral. And I wear around 10 pounds to compensate for the positive buoyancy of the aluminum alloy tank at the end of my dive. If I use steel tanks, I still tend to use a little bit of weight just to keep me balanced and adjust my trim or my position in the water. So I want my attitude to be such that my head is straight, my body straight, and as I kick, I'm moving in one straight line. Now, when I dive with students, I do carry a little bit of extra weight to be able to help them if they need help. Your instructor can discuss this further with you, or you can send me questions or comments down below in the questions and comments section. So I've yapped a lot, 
giving you this preamble and let's turn to what you probably came to this video for. We're gonna look at the weights and how I adjust it and how I set it up with my BCD if I'm using the integrated weight system. So let's look at the gear. So here in front of you, what I've got is a couple weights. I've got the belts and I've got a pocket that would allow us to integrate the weights into the BCD. So let's take a quick look. So this one here is indicated as two pounds. I've got this one here covered in a, a, a vinyl coating and this is a three pound weight. I've also got four, five, you can see it's pretty heavy. This one is lead shot in a mesh pouch. So it drains and so forth. And this is good to use in these pockets, of course, because you can't put that on a belt. Now, in odd occasions, of course, we have a rock and that's a scuba diving rock that we might stick in a diver's pocket. It's not hard reef or part of the reef system. This is dead rock. And that's why I might use it in a pinch, but not perfect or ideal. So your weights can be worn as you choose to wear them, but ideally you want equal amount on either side to balance you. So for example, if I were using my nylon webbing belt and I use the metal buckle because it gives you a more secure grip on your belt so it doesn't come undone and to lock it it's a fairly firm lock so that's ideal so it's not going to slip off. But I'm going to balance the weights and I use it by putting it to lay down here. Of course I would be here and I would put the weights on so that they are balanced and approximately at equal distance on my hips and then of course I would be in the middle and I buckle it up here. Now, so most people now choose the option of the integrated weights into their BCD unit and we have on the BCD unit four spots that we can put our weights. One is in each pocket here to the front and then you've got at the back for the trim or the, the minor adjustments I can put into the back slot here where the tank would normally be, I can put a maximum of one to two pounds in each of the pockets and lock it in. Remember, this does not have a quick release, so it cannot be dumped in cases of emergency. So that's why we use only one or two pounds here. Now to the front of this BCD, and this is where we carry the bulk of our weights, you would just simply open the Velcro attached to this pocket, slips your weights in, no matter what you need, close it, just velcro it in place. That's all you need to do. And then you're gonna place this into the pocket. Now this is an important step. Quite often we see a lot of weights at the bottom of the ocean and we wonder well, how to get there. So what happens is the divers don't click it and lock it. And as they don't do that, when they hit the water with the roll, usually the weights just fall out and head straight down to the bottom and the divers left on the surface wondering what happened. So when I put this in here, I simply put it in lock it and you must hear that click that lock if it does not lock you will lose these weights so be sure you hear the click and the lock and that way you know the weights are there and that takes you free dive, uh, diving and this is the other side so similar pocket goes here the weights go in and there you go you're all sorted out to release it it's simply it's also a quick release you pull on this handle and as you pull it, it opens the lever, the click, the clasp here, and that opens it and allows the tank, the weight pocket to remove completely from the BCD very quickly and easily. So that in a nutshell is your weight systems. That's how we use it. That's why we use a couple extra pounds at the start, or if we're using steel, we don't need to use all the extra weight. So I hope this video has been of some benefit or use to you. Hope it's gonna clear up a little bit of misconception and help you to dive safer also. So folks, I would like to thank you for sticking with me this far. I do hope you enjoyed the video and it's been meaningful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below in the comment section box. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. And if you do wanna see more content like this, please do subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you again and stay safe, stay well, safe diving, see you soon.